Now, what would be the electron configuration for titanium 4 plus? How many valence electrons does titanium 4 plus have? Mm. Yeah. So that's the key. Start by asking how many valence electrons there are. Well, this has zero valence electrons. Because we started with four, and we took four away. So it simply has the core electrons of argon. So it simply has the configuration of argon, but no extra valence electrons. Does it mean that it's like going to act like as argon? Like have a, what do you call this? Gas. Well, let's see. Uh, that's right. Chemically, this should behave somewhat like argon, although there might be some difference because this has a big charge, which argon doesn't have. But in some ways, there will be similarities between them. Is it considered then um, stable titanium 4 plus? Right. Well, to put it another way, this is not very likely to lose any more electrons. Right. All right, at this point, so that we can just leave it at that. This is not likely to, so we know that argon is very unlikely to lose electrons uh, because it's got the noble gas configuration, while titanium 4 plus is very unlikely also to lose any more electrons because it has an argon configuration. So that would be a similarity between them. So then would it be dimagnetic? That's what's more important, yeah. Or at least that's more important for what you how you might ask in this class. That's right. This would be diamagnetic because um, argon has all paired electrons. Everything that's in this column would have all paired electrons. So this would be a diamagnetic compound, which would be repelled by an electric field. Does that make sense? Any questions? So let's try the electron configuration for the medium. neutral vanadium. Let's try to write down what the electron configuration would be for neutral vanadium. start by asking what was the total number of valence electrons? What's the total number of valence electrons that neutral vanadium has? Five. Five. Right. All right, and where do they go first? Well, according to the periodic table, we start by filling up the 4s block. So vanadium is here. So we would start by filling up. So again, the core configuration is argon. We would fill up the s block. And then there's three left for the D block. So that looks like what you got. So that's right. It looked like one of you originally put a five here, but then you caught yourself. So there's five valence electrons total, but there's only three D electrons. We're in the fifth column from the left, but we're in the third column of the D block. So we don't want to confuse those two ideas. So that would be neutral vanadium. Okay, um, so now let's do the electron configuration for vanadium 2 plus. How many valence electrons would vanadium 2 plus have? 3, because 5 total minus 3 is going to be 3. That's right. 5 valence electrons total. All right, and where, what block they are, they, are they going to be put in? In the 3D, because um, when there are cations, we don't fill as shells. That's right. Now we should be not using the periodic table. We should be using this new rule that we learned. Now, the lowest possible energy, if possible, would be a valence F block, but there is no valence F block in this row, so the next best option is the D block. Uh, and is there room for all three of them in the D block? Yeah. So I think both of you uh, might have not gotten this. So in this case, 
all three electrons go in the D block, and none of them go in the S block. None of them are going to go in the S block. We wouldn't get to the S block, remember, unless we were able to put 10 electrons in the D block, which would be quite rare. Almost pretty much never happened for cations. So the electrons are going to go here in our D block. So it's going to be third magnetic. That's right. There'll be three unpaired electrons. Oops. Three unpaired electrons in the D block. All right, so um, we can't use the parity table for cations. The parity table only tells us about uh, what the low energy orbitals are for neutral elements. We need a new approach, which is this, for cations. So here we put things in the D block. Um, as just a, a, as a check, um, transition metal cations will pretty much never have any S electrons. They pretty much always lose all their S electrons. Um, uh, because again, there's room for 10 electrons in the D block. So you're, uh, I don't think you'll ever see an example of a cation with any S electrons left over uh, what for a transition. What about, uh, what about chromium and copper? Uh, those, those would still follow that same pattern. Okay. Now what you might be thinking about here, I, I should have mentioned this before. I said before that the periodic table tells us how to put the electrons in for neutral elements. But unfortunately, as, you, as you're remembering here, that's not 100% true. There are some exceptions where the periodic table doesn't work even for neutral elements. There are some exceptions where the periodic table doesn't work even for neutral elements. For example, in this row, you're right you're remembering that chromium and copper don't follow this pattern. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna, uh, we should spend too much time on that, though, because I noticed that in your lecture notes, your instructor kind of downplayed that. She said that that wasn't of too much practical importance for this class. But so they would lose one of the S right. electrons to fill it up, so they would have five for yeah. copper and then for, and then for or for chromium, I mean, and then for copper, they'd have ten. That's right. Lose it from the S. So copper, uh, so chromium. Can we just get it? Chromium actually has this. So neutral chromium has this electron configuration. No, 4s1, neutral chromium. So now we're going back to neutral chromiums again. I said before that you can use the periodic table to get the electron configuration for neutral elements. But now we're seeing that actually there are some exceptions that you uh, just have to memorize if that was important where the periodic table doesn't work. So the periodic table does not give the right answer for chromium because the periodic table would have predicted that this would be the configuration for chromium, filling up the S block before the D block. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that that doesn't work. Um, oh, sorry. But, but I'm still is it, this yeah, one. but yeah, let's try again. Yeah. Uh, and like right. this. So neutral neutral chromium has six has six, uh, still six still valence electrons. electrons. Neutral chromium has six valence electrons. Some sometimes people say that um, well. Maybe it's best just to memorize this, although sometimes people say that this is, happens because nature likes having all half-filled orbitals here, or nature likes, uh, but uh, some textbooks say that it's better just to memorize this rather than try to explain it. So is this that and that are correct those? Sorry. Yeah, this would be what the periodic table would predict, which actually turns out to be incorrect. The periodic table would have predicted this, but that actually is not correct. We just have to memorize separately okay. what chromium would be like if you were expected to know that. Like I said in the lecture notes, your instructor was downplaying this, so maybe yeah. you're not going to be tested on it. He but taught, it yeah. yeah, we went over this in, gen, in the first right. semester of Gen Chem, so that's probably why. But is it the same for everything in those rows of the Actually, table, uh, I think uh, once you get down to this row, it, things get even, uh, the periodic table becomes less reliable. There's lots more exceptions, oh, okay. but there, it, it's not true that everything under chromium follows this exception. So basically, you just have to look it up. Um, I would be surprised if you would be expected to have those memorized. Yeah. Uh, the only ones that you might have to have memorized are the ones for this row. So let's finish off with copper. How many valence electrons does copper have? Well, copper has 11, 11 valence electrons. Mm -hmm. The periodic table would predict that this would be the electron configuration. But that turns out experimentally to be false. And in fact, the electron configuration for neutral copper is this. And sometimes this is explained by saying that nature likes having all the d electrons filled. Um, yeah. I have a question. Uh, if it's a cation, then how is that going to be? And if it's a cation, that doesn't matter. For a cation, we can just go back to this rule. For cations, we can just go back to this rule, which means putting the electrons in the d before the s. So, for, so as chrom, uh, chromium and copper would follow the same rules for cations as everything else, which is that, again, transition metals basically 
Transition metal cations basically never have any s electrons. Okay. Transition metal cations basically never have any s electrons. So um, that's why again your instructor was not emphasizing this too much because actually what's much more important in this chapter is not the neutral transition metals but the transition metal cations because remember what most of the chapter is about is the coordination complexes and in the coordination complexes the transition metals aren't neutral they they are cations or they have positive oxidation numbers. So uh, that's why we shouldn't focus too much on the neutral uh, electron configurations here. We need to focus on what the cation configurations are like, because that's what most of this chapter um, is about.